Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs, the new economy version, and uh, we're doing quite well. Listenership is way up. Why? Because most people are still working, restructuring, dealing with this economy, trying to keep everyone employed, pay taxes, and keep and, and show our fighting spirit and pull together, not pull apart. And, uh, you know, our next guests, are, I think you're going to help you to sort of see how they're helping companies. But first of all, I want to introduce my co-host, Jim Farrell of PR First. Welcome, Jim. Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, good morning, everybody. Glad to be here. Thank you very much, Jim. And our guest is Mike LaCrosse, Director of Advisory Services at Blum Shapiro. Welcome and good morning to you as well, Mike. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So uh, what, what are you doing? What does advisory services at your firm do? And I bet you you're pretty busy right now. <laughs> yes, we are. Yeah, so, so Bloom Shapiro is the uh, region's largest advisory firm in New England. We have offices in Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts. We have a team of over 500 employees. Uh, we have services that include audit, tax. Uh, uh, we have other business advisory services and HR advisory. And my team specifically focuses on uh, CFO advisory and now source accounting practices. So uh, as you can imagine with what's going on today and everything going on with the CARES Act, that's one of the biggest things that we're focused on right now is the CARES Act and uh, helping people out with a paycheck protection program. But we, uh, we certainly do a lot of other things. What we're really doing is, is starting to ramp up on uh, starting to meet with our clients. Uh, as you can imagine, folks are really trying to uh, figure out what this new world is going to be. So what we're trying to do is help them in what this new world is, whether it's uh, going through a business transformation or reorganization, looking at a new strategy of what their new business is going to look like after this uh, or during this crisis. Well, you know, I've said this before. It used to be that clients could work at their pace, uh, you know, because it was a sort of a, a, an employer's economy. But now with this a new economy, employers cannot pick the pace of change. The market is picking the pace of change. What are the most common things you're working on with clients? Can you talk about the uh, sort of focus that for us so that our listeners can understand? Yeah, absolutely. So th the biggest thing today is really focused on, uh, we were helping our employees for the last uh, few weeks on the Paycheck Protection Program. And now what we're doing is really helping them. If, if you guys are aware of that and the listeners are aware of it, uh, you know, they are, uh, now a lot of our clients are actually receiving the money from the government. And what we're really trying to do is help them actually focus on getting as much of that forgiveness back from the government over the eight week period of the paycheck protection program. Uh, well, is there a formula for that? Because that is something I hear all the time. I mean, once yeah. it's for the banking system, people are sort of like just waiting. Banks are overloaded. Sometimes getting communication with the banks has been limited and people are just sitting there saying, I wasn't approved. I don't know if I will be approved. I have been approved. I don't know when I'm gonna get my documents. People are sort of standing in limbo, just waiting. Uh, how do you help that process along? Yeah, so, so we can't actually help with pushing the process along. That's all driven by the banks. What we're out there doing is helping them through the application process and following the rules. And now once uh, our clients are now getting the money, and a lot of our clients have actually received the money, but we're, we've actually done is built a loan forgiveness tool. It's out on our website where folks can actually go and download it. And, and it's an Excel-based model where folks can – uh, plug in their numbers to figure out how do we maximize that loan forgiveness. That's really cool. Yeah, so. we've we've done quite a bit. I, I would certainly encourage you and, and everyone else to check out our website. We have a, a lot of information based on what's going on with COVID-19 and how we can help from not only the advisory side of the house and, and the Paycheck Protection Program, but also all the tax implications as well. Right. And, and I do think this is a kind of a time of a, of a lot of overload with people uh, in terms of how they're dealing with this. It's just, it's, it's more than they can handle. So having you there must be very important right now to them. Has the pace increased for you in terms of how you're working yourself? Uh, it certainly has. Uh, you know, our practice, uh, the practice that I support is focused on um, helping businesses grow and, and f helping businesses ultimately change doing business assessments, doing business transformations. Well, you know, people are now taking a hard look at what, what is their business? Their business is completely different from what it was two to three months ago. And what is their business going to ultimately look like in say three to six months from now? You know, a lot of people don't know. We're, we're kind of in this period where we're focused on survival and, and using that paycheck protection program to, to support that. 
And, you know, hopefully here in the near future, we're going to get folks back to work. And then we have to figure out, okay, now that we're back to work, what does this new demand for products and services look like? And then ultimately, um, you know, how do we stabilize and go forward? I, I, you know, a lot of people are talking about the businesses that are, are, are shrinking and struggling, but there's also a lot of businesses out there that are booming based on what is happening in the market. And, you know, there's certain industries there that are just taking off. Uh, I don't want to uh, uh, dominate, and uh, just in case, uh, Jim, if you have any questions, you know, uh, feel free to jump in. I don't want to, you know, you're just not, a, you're, you're not just a pretty face. Well, thank you for that. I, I appreciate that. No, I, actually, the only uh, point I was going to ask Mike, he might want to talk about is I know that part of his role uh, with the firm is to uh, provide uh, fractional and outsource CFO ad advice. And just curious if there's more of that. Uh, is there's a greater uptick in that during this time than, than normal? Uh, you know, right now I, 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 I'm not seeing an uptick in that. I think it's going to change dramatically in the future because I think what's going to happen is the type of people that you are looking to be your head of finance, your CFO, some people uh, use the title director or controller, but you know, the needs are going to change. And, you know, I, I think that's what people are going to start to look at when they get back to work and look at what is this new economy and, and what are folks really looking at as the um, as the, the key asset, the financial asset for them to lead that type of organization going forward? You know, it's you got to have the right person in the right shoes. It's really what it's all about. And you know, depending on what that business is and what they're supporting, uh, you may need a different type of person going forward. You know, our practice we we deploy uh, different types of folks to be controllers and CFOs of business. As as you know, uh, I am. Uh, a fractional CFO of a business in Cambridge, Massachusetts, as well as um, we have other folks on our team that we can deploy for that type of work as well. You know, uh, I, you know, as Cobbler's son wears no shoes, and I don't think that's true for you. You may, talked about your postings before. How are you connecting your group and keeping yourself, you know, connected and working together as a team at Bloom Shapiro? I assume you might be a model for the rest of us. <laughs> well, you know, I think the key is that uh, we, we did a lot of investments in technology in the past few years. So we were prepared for this. It was very easy for us to, you know, work from home, doing uh, Zoom meetings, doing uh, Skype meetings, all those types of things. Uh, I think the key thing here is, uh, you know, my team's located all over New England. Uh, I, I rarely actually see my team face to face. And we are, we're used to this type of uh, environment. And because our clients are all over New England as well, um, what's actually happening is we're, we're able to continue to support them in every way with uh, Skype and telephone calls and Zoom meetings and all those types of things. Interesting. Uh, so uh, when clients ask you the question, how long should I be preparing for this? Do you have an answer for them? <laughs> you, you know, I, I think it goes back to what I said a few minutes ago. The, the time frame is difficult to, to determine. But I, I'm looking at this as uh, stages, right? So uh, it was the, oh no, what just happened stage and, and figure out how to um, get people working at home and set up their offices, just like what you spoke about. But now it's about survival is, you know, people are usually prepared for 10%. Hopefully they have a contingency plan in place um, that it's, you know, maybe it's a 20% drop in the economy, but Think about restaurants going from you know full seats to to zero overnight. Um, you know, I, I don't think many people are really thinking about that. So it's really about survival right now. And then once we get people back to work, it's okay. What is this new environment? What is the new demand for for your product or service? And and, and trying to re refigure out what the strategy of that business is going forward. That's going to take time. And then then you're going to get to stabilization and back to growth. Um, you know, is each one of those stages three months, maybe? Is each one of them six months? It could be. And uh, it's really a difficult answer, but we're trying to measure it in stages more than anything. Great. We've been speaking with Mike LaCrosse, La Director of Advisory Services at Bloom Shapiro, with my co-host for this uh, segment of Jim Farrell, PR First. Uh, Mike, if someone wants to discuss with you how you may be able to help them with advisory services in this economy, how would they find you? Absolutely. I think the best place is to go to bloomshapiro.com. Uh, we have all of our folks that are listed there in the firm, um, and you can look me up through there. Otherwise, feel free to reach out to me uh, directly via email. My email address is mlacrosse at bloomshapiro.com. Great. 
Jim Farrell, if anybody wants to get hold of you because you know they need to get their message out in this economy as well, how would they find you? Well, pretty much uh, email is the best way, J Farrell, J F A R R E L L at prfirst.com. Thanks, right. Jeffrey. Well, you're the new normal, Jim, because you know, in this economy, everybody's been complaining with me that their hair is out of control. So <laughs> I think you're the new the new model for the rest of us. I do what I can. No, you're, you're, you're a good man. And I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Radio Entrepreneurs. We're going to continue to tell people how people are dealing with this economy. As soon as we hear about it, we want to promote it. So stay tuned and stay, stay connected and stay well. Thank you, Jim. And thank, thank you, uh, Mike, as well. We look forward to talking to you again.